2 a.m. Bangkok, Thailand. Eight trucks. Eight elephants in cages. Twenty-five tons of speeding megafauna moving under the cover of night. This is a desperate part of the race to save the Asian elephant, but it's also the cause of a huge international conflict. The elephants are leaving their natural home here in Thailand for a new life far away. And for two years, angry conservationists have been fighting to stop the flight of the elephants. The story of the international conflict over this four-year-old baby elephant and seven others of her species starts here in the tiny village of Surin, seven hours' drive east of Bangkok. This little elephant is named Tong Di, and according to Buddhist tradition, she is just one step away from being reincarnated as human. The Buddha himself was an elephant before he returned to Earth as a man. So all elephants in Thailand are treated with great veneration and care. But even with the protection of Buddhism, Tong Di and her kind are under threat. She's part of an endangered species, and now these strangers from another land have come to save her life by taking her far away. The first time I met Tong Di, she just melted my heart. She was just the sweet, adorable little elephant, and you could just tell she had this really gentle, a sweet nature about her, and we hit it off immediately. Lucy Milo is part of a team of Australian zoologists from zoos in Sydney and Melbourne. They're here to help the villagers celebrate the start of Tong Di's 15,000 kilometer journey to a new home in Australia. From Bangkok, she and seven other domestic elephants we fly here to the Cocos Islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean. After three months in quarantine, Tong Di and the others will then fly to Sydney and Melbourne. <coughs> Far from the village where she was born, she'll breed in safety to help ensure the survival of her species. But not everyone is celebrating Tong Di's new future. Conservationists here in Thailand and in Australia are angry that she's been sold to the Australian zoos. The Thai elephants belong in their own, their own home range, their own habitats. So it's, it's a tragic to, to hear someone say, we can take good care of your elephants better than you do. They think the best way to save Tong Di is to release her in the wild, in her own country. Over the coming months, the argument over what's best for Tong Di will grow into a violent international conflict. Yeah, 
The hope and optimism here in Surin today will turn to stress and disappointment. It will be hard on the humans, and it will be hard on Tong Di. She and her three-year-old cousin, Tang Mo, will be caught up in a fight that will last for almost two years. <laughs> but for the moment, everyone is happy, because it looks like there's a bright future waiting for this little elephant. <laughs> This is all. We'd like to thank you very much for your hospitality. We understand how important Tang Mo and Tong Di are to you, and we promise to respect them and look after them and give them, give them the very best of care. Bye. <laughs> but the very best of care is not something Tong Di can rely on here in the village of Surin. Times have changed and now the village just can't afford to look after her. For thousands of years, elephants have been Asia's heavy lifting machines. Tractor, forklift and heavy haulage vehicle all rolled into one. But now machines have taken over. And with not enough work to earn their keep, domestic elephants are under threat. For Tong Di, this truck ride is on the road to long-term survival. But before she can start her new life in Australia, she needs to spend a short time at this special elephant quarantine station built by the Australian zoos. She'll be joined by seven other elephants from all over the country. Most are from tourist camps. Others, like Tong Di, are from small village farms. Here they will be retrained to learn commands in English and to form a special bond with their new keepers. Today, Tondi has the grassy compound to herself, but the greenery won't last. When the competition arrives, this will quickly become dust and mud. The plan is to stay in this makeshift compound for just 12 weeks. But as the new residents gradually arrive, nobody realizes that 12 short weeks will stretch into a difficult 18 months. And life in this bleak quarantine centre will become harder and harder to bear. Dawn in Elephant Boot Camp. the start of a strict daily regime to ensure the physical and mental health of eight highly intelligent residents. Did you have a good sleep? Yeah. You sleep well? Okay. <laughs> That's good. There is Tong Di. She looks very happy. Happy. Hi, Tong Di. How are you? How are you? Hi. Hi, look what I have. 
Good morning. Good morning. What a good oh, girl you minute. are. What a good girl. Each keeper will focus on one elephant. Hey, sweetheart. Lucy has Tong Di. What a good, good girl you are. Tong Di's name actually translates into the color golden. And we certainly think that she's pretty golden. And she certainly thinks so too. Her actual nickname is Pum Pui, which means little chubby girl. So most people end up calling her Pum Pui. And eating is her favorite pastime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she certainly deserves the name little chubby one. Little chubby girl, is that what that means? Pum Pui? You like your food, don't you? The first concern among the keepers is how these young strangers will get on with each other. <coughs> Elephants have the intelligence of a human five-year-old, and they have the distinct personalities to match. If personalities clash, it could be a disaster. Three tons of pugnacious pachyderm is no easy thing to control. But those fears quickly disappear. As the elephants play, their new future seems assured. But thousands of miles away in Australia, events are about to take an unexpected turn. A multi-million dollar rainforest enclosure at Taronga Zoo may sit empty if animal rights campaigners get their way. It's meant to house five elephants from Thailand, but the protesters claim zoos are cruel and are pressuring the federal government to ban their importation. Here in Sydney, the Taronga Zoo is spending tens of millions of dollars on this new enclosure. But the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and the International Humane Society have begun a major battle in the courts. The tribunal is hearing a case brought by animal activists who are trying to stop the importation of eight elephants from Thailand, five bound for Taronga and three for Melbourne. Tomorrow they'll visit the Royal Melbourne Zoo to inspect conditions there. The flight to Australia has been put on indefinite hold. I think it's very appropriate to have concerns and criticisms, and this just gives us a forum to address those concerns in a formal setting um, and put everybody on the same page. We all have the best interest of the elephants at heart, and in the end, that's what's gonna you know, sway the decision. The Australian zoos believe that Tong Di and her friends should come to Australia to build public support for the protection of the Asian elephant and to breed in safety. But the International Humane Society has a very different view. Elephants in captivity in Thailand are breeding very well. Let's focus on, if we need to worry about breeding um, elephants in captivity, far more sensible to do it in situ in Thailand where you have got um, much more realistic hopes and prospects of reintroducing the animals back to the wild. The problem is that the wild in Thailand is disappearing fast. A hundred years ago, 90% of the country was covered in forest. Wild herds like this were a common sight. Today, only 15% of Thailand is forest, and it's reducing every day. And a sight like this is incredibly rare. At one point, there was talk about a, a kind of uh, arc theory where zoos would be used to keep and propagate uh, endangered species. That's not so important now with artificial insemination and various other re reproductive techniques. But I think it's really important for educating children. Look, it teaches children that elephants are real. 
When you go to a zoo and see the real animal walking around and you can hear it breathing, it, it really gets you. It makes you think, ah, these creatures are flesh and blood. The concern when you're bringing elephants from Thailand is that there is an illegal trade in juvenile wild elephants into the tourist and timber camps. So could you say for certain that they are wild-born elephants? The arguments from both sides make sense. But while the court in Australia works to find a solution, life here in the temporary compound must go on. The problem is that this enclosure was never designed as a permanent home for eight highly intelligent elephants who need constant entertainment and care. So now, the daily tasks of feeding and looking after Tong Di and her friends take on a new significance. Nobody knows it now, but this time-consuming process will continue for months and then stretch into more than a year. Time, Tong Di and the others have big stomachs to fill. In the wild, Asian elephants will eat up to 16 hours a day, consuming over 250 kilos of vegetation. So these giant vegetarians mean a lot of work for a lot of people. What a good girl. Let's check you over, first thing. And the extended stay means that health becomes a real issue. Very good. If disease breaks out in this small compound, it will be a disaster. Samples are collected for analysis in the neighboring university. Good girl, good, good girl, very good. Banana, banana. Good girl. Very good. That's the perfect trunk wash. And there's another factor. If Tong Di and the others do get the go-ahead to fly to Australia, they'll be flying to an isolated island continent that is free of many diseases that plague the rest of the world. Okay, swish. Mm. All of it, we need all that goo. Squeeze that goo. A little more. Oh, look at that. That is perfect. <laughs> what a clever girl. Perfect. See in that mouth. Oh, look at those beautiful teeth. You're about to lose one too, look at that. Is it wiggly? It's a little wiggly. That was very good, thank you. So one of the main nice. things that we're trying to do is first, before these animals ultimately end up in Australia, we just want to make sure they're clear of any diseases, make sure um, they're not carrying anything that can be harmful to any of the native Australian animals or any of the other animals that are in the zoo. Just as important is the elephant's mental health. They love to play because they're so intelligent. Games prevent boredom and give them practical skills. The key to keeping an elephant happy is to keep it busy. So all the games are carefully designed to be educational. Here, Tong Di and her friends have been given giant frozen fruit treats to play with. for the ice blocks is that if we were just to give them a treat, that might make their tummies happy, but we're interested in making their minds happy and stimulated as well. They're kind of like children. You have to keep them occupied and entertained. Before long, they figure it out. Just more proof of their amazing intelligence. But even with Lucy and the other keepers providing a daily routine of mental and physical exercise, the small compound just doesn't have enough distractions for Tong Di and her friends. Yeah. 
While the elephants and their keepers play, the arguments in Australia continue. Officially, a decision has not been made about whether to allow the importing of the eight animals. The Environment Minister has received more than 50,000 emails and postcards opposing the removal of the animals. The Sydney and Melbourne zoos will spend over $40 million to fly and house eight elephants. And that's really stirred up the zoo's critics. With the fight for conservation, you've got limited resources, there's limited dollars, so there was a big question about whether this was the best way to spend $40 million. You could do so much more good with that amount of public money if it was invested over in Thailand in terms of habitat protection, rehabilitation, sanctuaries. It's a good point, but it does nothing to improve the life of Tong Di and her friends trapped in this dusty enclosure on the outskirts of Bangkok. It's now been six months since the elephants arrived here for their 12-week stay, and there's no sign of them leaving anytime soon. The same routine continues day in, day out. Repetition becomes a fact of life. Days dissolve into weeks. Weeks dissolve into months. Finally, the months dissolve into a year. And then still more months. News of delayed court hearings and ongoing appeals only add to the frustration. She's being really, really bad today. Finally, after 18 months of enforced setbacks, the team has something to smile about. The legal argument in Australia has been resolved. The court has found in favour of the zoos. The flight of the elephants will go ahead. It was obviously a huge relief when the court case was finally decided in our favour, and now we can move on. Now it's time for the huge task of loading eight very intelligent animals on trucks for the trip to the airport. It'll be uncomfortable for Tong Di and the others, but it's not for long. It's the evening before their big journey, and the months of crate training pay off as they calmly go in without a hitch. It's hard to believe that we're actually going to be going home to Australia after all this time in Thailand. It just feels a little bit surreal, but um, we're all just really anxious to go. Even the elephants, they can sense that something exciting is going to happen, and uh, really looking forward to it. These trucks will take the elephants to the airport, where this giant Aleutian transport plane is waiting. It's one of the few aircraft big enough to take four elephants at a time and it's flown into Thailand from the Ukraine, especially for the job. Remember, they'll fly from Bangkok to the Cocos Islands off the northwest of Australia, where they'll spend three months in quarantine, before finally landing in Sydney and Melbourne. The following morning, the convoy is ready. But nobody is prepared for what happens next. And it's big trouble. 
Keep your eye on the small group of people and the woman in yellow walking towards the trucks. These women are Thai elephant nationalists. The Australian conservationists have lost their battle in court. But these nationalists won't accept the decision. They don't want Tong Di or any elephant to leave their country, and they've brought the international press with them. We are very worried that the animals will not good for the animals to be held like this. We really think we should start moving. Otherwise, they're going to very good home in Australia, no. as you know. No, their home is here in Thailand, ah, not in your home, it's not in your home. Ah, but I'm sure you, if you can come to us, no, you'll I be won't. very happy. I'm now. Well, I've been protesting with my own government, the Thai government, since 1993, to ban or to stop all the Thai elephant export. So this is not the first time, but I have never come out to stand right in front of a truck like this. It was just... I couldn't stand it any longer. It's 33 degrees and humid, and the elephants are getting uncomfortable. It's decided to move them back to the shade of the compound until the argument can be resolved. This woman believes the convoy is about to make a run for it and stops the truck carrying little Tong Di. She's not a happy animal. Um, she seems to be the focal animal because she's the lead, the lead vehicle and so everyone's around her. So there is a lot of pressure on her and, and that's really hard because it's all very political at the moment and so we really have no idea how long this is going to go on for. It's a stalemate. The police won't intervene and the trucks can't move because of the protesters. The elephants are getting more and more agitated. They can hear the angry crowd and it's frightening them. Hey, you'd like some grass? Lucy does her best to calm Tong Di down. Just the hypocrisy over, you know, claiming that they care about elephants and yet choosing to hold these elephants hostage and causing them undue distress, I think, was just absolutely horrible. The hours drag by and the plane won't wait forever. The police won't remove the protesters until they get orders from their headquarters. They want confirmation that the elephants are allowed to leave the country, but no one can find the right official to confirm it. So everyone waits, and the elephants really begin to suffer. So we're sort of approaching about uh, 22 hours now since the, uh, the elephants uh, were loaded into their crates, and I suppose uh, we're sort of getting down to the wire now as far as how long we should sort of keep them in the crates, and. Uh, we're waiting on a decision to, uh, to either uh, move on to, to the airport or, or the alternative. If that uh, doesn't come through, then um, we'll have to uh, look at unloading them, which is uh, going to be a bit of a shame. We're still really, uh, really hoping, even though it's sort of coming down to the final few hours, uh, um, you know, we're still hoping that we might be able to proceed on to the airport. At the 23rd hour, a decision is made. The plane has been cancelled. The trucks move back. This round has clearly been won by the protesters. Well, the decision was made to return the elephants to the quarantine facility. And uh, now we're just kind of waiting. We're in a state of limbo. We're not sure what's going to happen next. Um, we're just trying to deal with what's going on, focus on the elephants, leave all that um, negativity behind, and, and go from there, move on. Back in the compound, after almost 24 hours trapped in a small steel cage, Tong Di makes her displeasure known, loud and clear. The next morning, keepers and elephants alike are back in the quarantine compound with no idea of when they'll be released. I 
just feel numb. I can't believe that after almost two years of being in this quarantine station, which was meant to be very temporary, we're only supposed to be here three months, and here we are again over over these protesters, which which blocked our our passage, and it's just astonishing to me. I just I don't even have words to explain it. I'm just numb and disappointed and. I have to try and push all that aside and focus on the elephants because they really need us right now and that has to be our focus as always. Outside, a diplomatic argument rages between the Thai and Australian governments. It could be weeks or even months before a settlement. Whatever the outcome, the elephants can't live here for that long. This enforced stay is taking its toll. But for these protesters, 18 months of discomfort for Tong Di and her friends is a necessary sacrifice in a much larger struggle. They believe they're fighting for the fundamental heart of Thai culture. Elephants play a very important part of our life. Most of Thai people are Buddhist, and the biggest target of Buddhism is Nivarana or enlightenment. And we do believe that uh, to go to Nivara, you have to reborn to be human. But take care, you might reborn to be elephants. Even the Lord of Buddha, he used to be elephants. So that's why we have elephants in very, always in a very special part in our life, in our culture, even in our next life. This is Thai New Year called Songkran. And these elephants are part of this three-day water fight for specific religious reasons. They're helping to wash away the worries and the woes of the last year. So it's little wonder people resent the idea of their national symbol being flown to a non-Buddhist country far away. So Tong Di and the others are caught right in the middle of a very clear argument. And the irony is that both sides have the well-being of the elephants at heart. After a few weeks, the Thai and Australian governments finally agree. The contract with the Australian zoos will be honoured. Once again, under the cover of darkness, Tong Di and the others are loaded into their crates. It's well after midnight, and the protesters are nowhere to be seen. The giant Russian transport plane has been chartered once again and is due to take off at dawn. With police and army protection and the blessing of both the Australian and Thai governments, the elephants are on their way. This time, nothing has been left to chance. They're making a dash for the airport while the protesters sleep in their beds. After almost two years of argument and frustration, they're on schedule for the flight out of Thailand at last. But then, just an hour from the airport, fate lands another blow. The lead truck carrying Tong Di breaks down. It's a disaster. 
If word gets out and the angry protesters catch them here, the violence could get out of hand. The airplane is waiting. The military are ready to move. And Tong Di is stranded. The convoy is seriously behind schedule. They've already had to cancel the plane once. They must make it. It takes the mechanic nearly three hours to fix the problem. The police pull out all stops, blocking all roads to make sure the convoy gets through. The three-hour delay makes the process of loading incredibly tense. As daylight lights up the work, the risk increases every minute that the protesters will catch them and stop the flight. is to fly the first four elephants to the Cocos Islands, then turn around and pick up the next four. It all has to happen within 48 hours, and they're already late. Go! Despite the months of planning, nobody knows how Tong Di and the others will cope with their first experience of flying. The next few minutes are critical. My first and foremost concern is her safety and well-being, and I worry about her being scared on the plane or frightened of the unknown, but I have confidence in our strong bond and relationship, and uh, I'm gonna let her know that we're gonna get through this together. We're both making this journey together, and somebody's always gonna be by her side the entire trip. So far, so good. The noise inside is deafening, but Lucy does her best to calm Tong Di. They have a six hour flight ahead of them. Um, she's doing really, really well. She, she's tired as can be expected, but uh, overall she's handling it really well. But the long flight is going to be worth it. They've really got something to look forward to. The Cocos Islands, Australia's tropical outpost in the Indian Ocean. It's a dream holiday destination. The elephants will spend a final three months here on the second stage of their quarantine. The stopover will make sure they don't carry any diseases like TB into Australia. There are worse places to relax for three months. Tong Di and the others settle down. They're as comfortable as any elephant will ever be at 30,000 feet. The airport at the Cocos Islands spends most of its time as a golf course. This is undoubtedly the largest and strangest cargo the islanders have ever seen. Four down, four to go. The plane will return tomorrow morning for an elephant reunion.
20 hours later, and here they are, on the Cocos Islands at last. And they can't wait to catch up. The elephants have come at last. The island's been waiting a couple of years for them, and I'm sure they're going to have as good a time here as we do. So I don't think it'll be windsurfing, but uh, yeah, they'll have a good time. Tong Di and the others have their first day at the beach. Just what you need to get rid of jet lag. really well here on Cocos. They're really enjoying their, their new home. It's very different from Thailand. There's coconut trees and lots of grass and sand. There's a few things missing, like a mud wallow. Uh, they're also missing a pool. So what we do is just hose them down several times a day, get them cooled off, let them splash, that sort of thing. Um, and I know once they finally get to their new homes in Australia, that's going to be the one thing that they're really just going to go mad over is is the pools because elephants love to swim. And this is what Lucy is talking about. Tens of millions of dollars worth of elephant-friendly accommodation. Construction of the enclosures with their large swimming pools in Sydney and Melbourne is complete. Here in Melbourne, Two Asian elephants are awaiting the three new arrivals. Tong Di and the other four will live here in Sydney. I think one of the best features of these exhibits is that it eliminates the need for chaining elephants, which is what these elephants have had to um, live with their entire lives. This is just going to be so liberating for these elephants, and I can't wait, can't wait for them to get there. Life in the Cocos falls into routine. The same health checks, the same constant monitoring of the elephant's physical and mental well-being. Finally, after three months of island relaxation, Tong Di and her companions are about to make the last leg of their trip to Australia. A journey that was to have taken six months has taken more than two years. But after all their careful training, Tong Di and the others are seasoned travelers. Everything is going great. The elephants loaded like a dream. They're calm in the crates. I think they're actually excited about their new adventure. These have become the, the magical crates. You know, where they end up, nobody knows. So they're really looking forward to it. Once again, 25 tons of megafauna is on its way to a flight at 30,000 feet. In two years, Tong Di will have travelled over 1,200 kilometres by truck and more than 9,000 kilometres by aircraft. But she still seems relaxed and happy, a remarkable testament to Lucy's care. She's doing extremely well. Like always, she just surprises me. I'm so proud of her. She's ready for her next adventure. Uh. 
but Tong Di is still a three-ton animal, flying in a confined space, nine kilometers above the surface of the Earth. If something goes wrong mid-flight, it could be horrific. Lucy wants to avoid giving tranquilizers, but she will if Tong Di gets too stressed. In spite of all the noise and vibration, Tong Di has settled down. It's a chance for everyone to grab some shut-eye. After seven hours, they're over the vast, dry Australian continent at last. Even after months of quarantine, Australian customs demand a final precaution against insect intruders. The first flight of the elephants finally arrives in Australia. Underway. The police have closed roads, especially for their triumphant entry into Sydney. And here in Melbourne, the elephants have touched down safe and well. Back in Sydney, Tong Di and the others arrive at their multi-million dollar enclosure at last. Tong Di is unchained for the last time. Unless it's a dire emergency, she'll never be restrained like this again. She's probably a little stiff after the long flight in the crate but she's soon reunited with her companions as they explore their new surroundings. Tong Di has had a most eventful couple of years. She's been through a lot for a young elephant. She may never forget it, but one thing is for sure, she'll be well looked after here. These are just eight elephants out of 35,000 that are left in all of Asia. And by bringing them into Australia, I know we can touch the hearts of so many Australians. And by doing so, we can create more awareness towards elephant conservation. Um, the elephant in Asia is in so much trouble right now, and this is just one thing that we can do. But back here in Thailand, thousands of elephants are still in trouble.
these are some of the lucky ones. They're entertaining tourists, but there's room for only 10% of Thai elephants in tourism. For the rest, it's a struggle to survive as the natural wilderness and work with humans disappears. By working together, the conservationists and the zoos could give the Asian elephant a viable future. Because in the end, all compassionate humans must have the best interests of these intelligent creatures at heart. <laughs>